If your raised beds look healthy but your earthworms have vanished, something's gone wrong beneath the surface. Worms don't just disappear for no reason, they're escaping. When the soil turns toxic, too acidic, or clogged with harmful additives, these quiet workers pack up and leave. And when worms leave, your soil slowly dies. What most gardeners don't realize is that a few harmless soil additions are actually silent worm killers. Let's uncover what's driving them away and how to bring them back for good. Earthworms are more than a sign of good soil, they make good soil. They digest organic matter, leaving behind nutrient-rich castings that supercharge plant growth. Their burrowing creates tiny tunnels that aerate the bed and keep roots oxygenated. Without them, your soil becomes compacted, waterlogged, and lifeless. Yet even the most passionate gardeners sometimes push worms away without realizing it. It's not neglect. It's the wrong ingredients. It might feel eco-friendly to toss fresh kitchen waste directly into your raised beds, but worms see it differently. Raw vegetable peels, fruit rinds, and coffee grounds ferment and rot before they decompose. This process releases heat and acids that can burn delicate worm skin. Rotting scraps also attract fruit flies, ants, and even rodents, all of which disturb the soil ecosystem. If you want worms to thrive, pre-compost your kitchen waste until it becomes dark, crumbly, and cool. That's the kind of food worms crave, gentle, nutrient-dense, and microbe-rich. Adding raw scraps directly into the soil is like serving raw dough instead of fresh bread. It's unfinished and unsafe. Fresh manure, especially from cows, chickens, or horses, seems like a nutrient powerhouse but it's far too hot for worms. It contains high levels of ammonia and nitrogen that can burn soil organisms and roots alike. Worms are sensitive to ammonia and will escape within hours of exposure. If you want to use manure, compost it for at least three to six months until it no longer smells strong or releases heat. When it turns into soft, dark humus, it becomes a worm-friendly feast. To apply safely, mix one part composted manure with three parts garden soil and lightly moisten the blend before adding to your raised bed. This creates a balanced nutrient profile that attracts worms instead of, you know, repelling them. Many gardeners sprinkle wood ash or lime to sweeten acidic soil, but too much of either creates a hostile environment. Wood ash is alkaline and rich in potassium, but when overapplied, it spikes the soil pH and disrupts microbial life. Lime does the same. Once the soil becomes too alkaline, worms can't absorb moisture through their skin and, well, they dehydrate. If you must use wood ash, limit it to one cup per square yard of soil and dilute it in one gallon of water, stirring thoroughly before watering evenly across the bed. Never apply it dry, always test your soil's pH first. A reading between 6.0 and 7.0 is ideal for worms and most garden crops. Remember, balance is key. A little ash nourishes, too much turns deadly. Chemical fertilizers might make plants green fast, but they're like caffeine shots for the soil. Temporary and draining, most contain salts that dry out worm bodies and alter the soil's natural balance. These salts accumulate over time, turning your soil into a sterile medium where worms simply can't survive. To feed plants and worms, switch to organic fertilizers such as worm castings, compost tea, or diluted fish emulsion. For a powerful but safe blend, mix two tablespoons of liquid fish fertilizer in one gallon of water and apply once every two weeks. It delivers a steady nutrient supply without damaging your worm community. Adding leftover cooking grease, oily food, or dairy waste to raised beds might seem like a recycling trick, but it backfires quickly. Oils coat soil particles, blocking oxygen flow and creating anaerobic zones. Worms need air to breathe through their skin and when the soil turns airless, they suffocate. Instead, keep fats and oils out of your compost and soil altogether. Focus on carbon-rich materials like dried leaves, shredded cardboard, and mature compost to maintain aeration and encourage worm tunnels. Even plant-based waste can cause trouble when added fresh. Grass clippings, green leaves or fruit waste generate acids as they decompose, if these materials aren't fully composted, the resulting acidity can drive your soil pH below 5.5, a level that's lethal to worms. 
To neutralize acidity naturally, blend one tablespoon of agricultural lime into one gallon of water, then lightly mist your soil surface after heavy compost applications. This gentle formula raises pH slowly, restoring comfort for worms while preserving soil life. Worms love moisture, but not mud. Overwatering suffocates them just as much as dryness does. The goal is a damp sponge-like texture. When squeezed, your soil should release just a few drops of water, not a stream. If your bed dries out quickly, mix in one part mature compost and one part coconut choir for every three parts of existing soil. This blend retains moisture evenly while improving texture. Check pH every few months using a simple test kit, keeping it between 6 and 7. This sweet spot keeps microbes active and worms multiplying. Once the harmful materials are gone, your raised beds can recover. Start by layering compost and leaf mold about 2 inches deep across the surface. Keep it moist but not soaked. Within weeks, beneficial bacteria and fungi will flourish, creating the environment worms love. If you want to speed things up, you can introduce a handful of red wigglers or night crawlers. Just make sure the soil is balanced and cool. If it's still heating from decomposition, wait until it settles. Avoid constant digging, which destroys worm tunnels. Instead, let your soil breathe naturally. Feed it small amounts of compost or aged manure every few weeks. And honestly, just watch as worm populations explode again. A thriving worm population is like having a full-time team of gardeners underground. They aerate your soil, boost nutrient cycling, and even help control harmful pathogens. When worms vanish, your garden's natural engine stalls, and, you know, no amount of fertilizer can replace their work. The good news? Once you remove the wrong inputs and balance the right ones, worms come back stronger than ever, and your soil becomes richer with every passing season. Your raised beds can become living, breathing ecosystems again, but it starts with knowing what not to add. Skip the raw scraps, the quick-fix chemicals, and the overuse of ash or lime. Focus on balance, compost, and gentle nourishment. That's how you turn lifeless dirt into vibrant, worm-filled soil that feeds your plants naturally. If you found this guide helpful, don't keep it to yourself. Hit the like button, subscribe to Crop Corner, and share this with every gardener who wants to build better soil. Let's bring the worms back, one raised bed at a time.